My fellow Americans, we are in need of real leadership in this country. This is a sad story. If you're having a good day, this might uh, this might spoil your day a little bit. Die, unless you're a cold-hearted bastard, then you don't care. Right? Diabetic groom to be dies after taking cheap insulin to pay for his wedding. That's right. So that's where we are in America. Everything the the price of if you have a heart heart disease, you got uh, the price of our drugs. The ones that we really need, not the stupid antidepressants that, that you know, I think 60% of the country is taking. Not those, but actual, actual drugs like insulin, for example, or a heart medication that may lower your blood pressure, right? Every single drug we pay for, I don't take any drugs, but every, every single, maybe someday, but every single drug we pay for, we can get, we can get it at one-tenth of the price. One-tenth of the price if we ne- only negotiated with Big Pharma. The time is, is for big, it, the time right now is for Medicare for all. Medicare for all, that's the answer. Single payer, Medicare for all. Uh, so here's the story. You know what, let's listen. I was going to try to explain it the best I can, you know, but I'm going to let, you know who I'm going to let talk about it? I'm going to let Bernie Sanders explain it for you. Tell it, Bernie. Is the idea that health care is a human right, not a privilege, a radical idea? I don't think it is. It's not. And the truth is, we are the only major country on earth. Many people don't know this. We're the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right. And yet we end up spending almost twice as much per capita on health care. The function, and you can argue with me if you want, but the function of the current health care system is not to provide quality care to all. It is to make tens of billions of dollars in profit for the drug companies and the insurance companies. That's the function. If you go to Canada, and I live 50 miles away from the Canadian border, you have major heart surgery. You're in the hospital for a month. Do you know what the bill is when you get out? Zero. You got it. You go to any doctor you want. You don't have to take out your wallet. And yet they guarantee health care to all of their people, and they spend one half of what we spend. That's kind of what I want to do, and I don't think that that's terribly radical. We have a program now, which everybody knows. It's called Medicare. It was started by Lyndon Johnson back in 1965. It is a popular program. Uh, all that I want Everybody covered at half the price. Listen up. What I want to do over a four-year period is to expand it. Today, eligibility at age 65. I want to take it down to 55, 45, 35, everybody over a four-year period. That's about it. And I want to expand benefits to include... Uh, dental care, hearing aids, and eyeglasses uh, as well. That's about it. Not too radical. But that doesn't sound radical at all. Now, when you say that they that Canada spends less, obviously they have less people. You mean less per capita? Yes, half per capita. Half exactly, per capita. per capita. And and the quality of care is as good uh, or better. Do they have problems? Yeah, they have problems. Everybody has problems. But overall, the health care uh, experts will tell you the quality of care there is as good or better than it is in our country. So what's the hurdle? Okay, I'll tell you exactly what the hurdle is. The hurdle is exactly the same thing as in every other aspect of our lives. It's the power of money. All right, listen to this. Over the last 20 years, the drug companies alone have spent $4.5 billion in 20 years on lobbying and campaign contributions. That's what we're up against. The knowledge, and I mark my words, Within a short period of time, you will see TV ads in California, all over this country, demonizing Bernie Sanders. He wants to do this terrible thing to you. He wants to do that. They have unbelievable amounts of money, uh, and politicians are frightened of that power. I'll give you one example. Uh, back in 2016, I got involved here in a little way with an effort on the part of the nurses to control uh, the cost of prescription drugs in California. You may recall that effort. I do. It was a ballot item in one state here in California. Do you know how much the drug companies alone spent to defeat that effort? They spent $131 million on one ballot item in one state. All right. Last year, the top 10 drug companies made $69 billion. A week ago, I went to Canada with a number of Americans who are dealing with diabetes. We bought insulin in Windsor, Ontario for one-tenth the price, 10% of the price, same exact product being charged in America. So you got drug companies that are engaged in collusion and in price fixing who are incredibly greedy, and the result is many elderly people, many working people simply cannot afford the medicine they need. This is, it's unbelievable. And the reason for all of that stuff 
is we are the only country in the world that does not negotiate with the drug companies. They can charge you any price they want. And that has to do with the fact that we don't have a national health care program. Medicare is not negotiating, etc. Wow. Holy smokes. What do you say to that, man? What do you say to that, guys? I thought, uh, you know, Medicare for all. Right? It's a Bernie Sanders. He's a socialist, right? He doesn't know what he's talking about. So listen to this horrible story, right? There's the answers. Right? You told, Bernie says it all. I, I was going to try to, to you know, paraphrase what he was saying, but he says it all. The, the, it's, a, it's a pharmaceutical lobby. It's billions and billions, of, uh, billions, and billions of dollars thrown at the, at the public you know, to convince them that Medicare for all is not the way to go. And because they got a billion dollars, they could defeat you know, uh, policy as it comes down the pipe. Medicare for all would eliminate that. You understand? It would eliminate that. And this kid right here might still be alive. So a diabetic groomed to be, uh, groomed to be dies after taking cheap insulin to pay for his wedding. Right? It's, there's, there's stories all over, all over the country of people breaking their pills in half, taking half a pill, because they can't afford it, right? And we just, we just learned that the price of the medications is one-tenth the price in Canada, we could probably make it a one-fiftieth the price. So listen, the high price of medicine cost him his life. When Josh Wolker's son uh, turned 26, he aged out of his stepfather's private insurance, uh, health insurance, and was unable to afford his $1,200 a month insulin. $1,200 a month for insulin at one-tenth the price that would be 120 bucks. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't even be that. So if we could, if we could sell it at 100 dollars a month, we could make it at a fraction of the cost, and that's what we should be paying, or at least half that. Right? We began. Uh, he began rationing his pricey prescriptions before a doctor recommended taking Rallyon, an over-the-counter uh, brand sold for 25 dollars a vial at, at Walmart. Right? Looking for the cheap. You know, the, the, cheap, the cheap alternative. It didn't work for his body, his mom said, Erin er, Wilson uh, told the Post. Her son died June 14th, and she's still in mourning. Known as human insulin, Relion requires more time to become effective than the analog insulin that Wilkinson had previously been taken. But at one-tenth of the price, it was more affordable for the Northern Virginia dog kettle, kennel supervisor who was earning $16.50 an hour. So he's, he's got a job. He's working. Now, if he was really poor, he'd get a Medicaid card, and his insulin would be free. Or it would be maybe a dollar at, the, at, the, pharma, at the, uh, the pharmacy. But instead, he actually works, and because he works, his insulin is, is $1,200 a month. How could someone pay $1,200 a month if, if he doesn't, uh, does his insurance cover it? Probably not because he's a dog kennel supervisor. He probably doesn't get insurance. And, and you play that whole stupid freaking game of insurance coverage. Right? When it comes to type 1 diabetes, people who are facing unthinkable decisions between the cost of living and their very lives, Will, uh, Wilson Weaver writes in a post uh, for a diabetes blog, full of similar posts about those uh, lost to di type 1 diabetes after being unable to afford insulin. Unable to afford the drug that keeps them alive that we have at one-tenth of the price, we're letting people die. We're letting people die. We, he, we figure, uh, hey, it's $25, we can do that. And we'll just work with it and try to do the best we can, Will, uh, Wilson's fi fiancé said. Uh, Wilson uh, Walters, also uh, a type 1 diabetic, began using the cheaper insulin as well last winter. The pair uh, also had to switch, an over, switch to an over-the-counter brand of their blood glucose meters to keep medical prices within their budget. The couple among 30... Uh, the couple among the 30 million U.S. residents living with diabetes planned for a rustic barn house wedding in December and hoped to save money for it 
with the more affordable, if less effective, medication. So again, we have people, we have a young generation, 30-somethings, they can't buy, forget about buying a house. He's trying to buy a house and he's got to almost die, go out on a limb just to make ends meet. Now, he's a, he has a real job. He's a supervisor in a kennel. Real job, sixteen fifty an hour. Not enough to, not enough to live. Not enough to get married. Not enough to buy a house. Not enough to, and his his wife probably works as well, right? Not enough to live, right? That's the that's the situation, right? That we're in right now. Medicare for all solves a little bit of the problem. Right? Get the money out of politics. You see, do you see the point? Are people seeing the point yet? Or am I talking to myself? Still, after graduating high school, Josh lost his childhood insurance coverage, and his troubles began. He couldn't, he couldn't afford uh, the maintenance of supply, supplies for his insulin pump. So he had to make, them, make the switch back to syringes. It's just compromise all along. Look, this kid's dead now, right? The kid's dead because of the, because of the healthcare industry, right? Dead. Dead. Dead as a doornail. On his second night sleeping there, Wilkinson and Walters were FaceTiming before bed when he complained of stomach problems and, prom- and promised to take his insulin before signing off. In the morning when Walters called his phone and he didn't pick up, she became worried. She rushed to the kennel to discover that Wilkinson was unconscious on the floor. Uh, insulin shock. I remember, I remember, uh, I just remember smacking him on the face saying, babe, wake up. You have to wake up. You have to wake up. Such a sad story, right? So Marcus Conti reporting on this very, very troubling, very troubling. And, and again, if you put down here socialism, communism, all this bullshit, I'm just going to, again, I'm going to delete your, fly, I'm gonna delete your shit. I don't care. Right? I did, I'm just going to delete your shit because you're stupid. Go on a fucking Trump site. Go on a stupid Trump site and tell them and preach your fucking bullshit, your, your bullshit about about capitalism and and no 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 I'm a survival of the fittest. Right? Fuck you already. Fuck you. People are dying, man. People are dying. Suicide suicide rates are high. Right? We need Medicare for all. There's only one candidate in the field that could lobby for it. And and don't tell me he's a fucking sellout. I don't want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear any any more of this. This guy's a sellout. That guy's a sellout. Look, if you want a savior. If you want a savior, someone to come in and save you and, 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 and give you everything you need, try a religion, right? Try, go, go get lost down the rabbit hole of a religion. If you want a figurehead that can use the bully pulpit of the presidency to guide this nation towards universal single-payer health care and deflate the, finan- the pharmaceutical industrial complex right, and eliminate insurance companies that are raping you, then there is one candidate, there is one solution, there is one direction to take, and that is, that is Medicare for all. Marcus Conti reporting.